The density of air tells us how much mass is within a certain volume, how squished together the air is essentially. This has a huge impact on our engines and our wings. But how does it affect the performance of our aircraft? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Grant and welcome to the fourth class in the Meteorology series. In this class, we're going to be continuing that breakdown of the atmosphere and take a look at the density element. Density doesn't play a bigger role in weather production as pressure, temperature or humidity, but it is an important element and it's worth having a good understanding of. It will help you in future as well when we move on to the performance series. Density is given by the formula rho equals mass over volume, which gives us a unit for density of kilograms per meter cubed. In the International Standard Atmosphere, the sea level density is 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed. In the atmosphere, as we climb, we know that our temperature reduces, which causes the air to compress slightly. So if we take a look at our formula, the value for volume would go down, which would send the density up. But this isn't the case. This isn't actually what happens in the real world. This is because the atmospheric pressure is also reducing as we climb. So as the pressure reduces, this box starts to expand. And that means that our volume actually increases. So we're dividing by a larger number and therefore the density reduces. Basically the pressure, in essence, has a larger effect on what happens to the density than the temperature. The density at the surface is not constant and changes according to a few things, some of which we just looked at when we were talking about the altitude. The first one is the temperature. So as the temperature decreases, it means that the um, air contracts and we're dividing by a smaller number. The volume also decreases with the temperature, which means that the density increases. Or if you flip it around, as the temperature goes up, the air expands and there are few air particles per unit volume. And that means that the density will decrease. Pressure influences like we just talked about. It's the same sort of idea as the pressure drops, the air expands, which means that the density will also decrease. Again, think about the box as expanding out this time as the pressure drops. So this is the box contracting as the temperature goes down, and this is the pressure expanding, uh, sorry, the density and the volume um, expanding, sorry, the volume expanding as the pressure goes down, which means that the density decreases. The other thing that changes density is the humidity. The more water in the air, then the less dense the air is. So as the humidity goes up, the air becomes less dense. This is because a water molecule weighs less than air molecules. So if we replace air molecules with water molecules, we've got a lower total mass being divided by the same volume. We're dividing a lower number by a same volume, which means that the density goes down. So depending on where we are in the world, you can make some assumptions. In the Australian outback desert in the summer, the air is pretty likely to be low density based on the temperature being very high. In the winter, in Russia, it's likely to be high density air because, again, the temperature would be quite low and that would mean that the air is dense and uh, pressure patterns would have a big influence on this as well, as well as the levels of humidity. If you're by the coast, your humidity is going to be a lot higher, so your air density won't be as high. Aircraft performance in terms of aerodynamic forces depends on the formula force equals a half rho v squared s c f, where the force is either lift or drag, rho is the density, v is the speed, s is the surface area, and the cf is a coefficient of lift or drag, depending on which one we're finding. If you're unfamiliar with this formula, then go and watch my previous videos on lift and drag in the Principles of Flight series, and that should get you up to speed. But you can quite clearly see here that density has an influence on this formula. It also has an effect on engine performance. Generally speaking, very generally, 
more dense air is better for the engines. What we can do to help us when we use these equations and calculating the performance of an aircraft is to use something called the density altitude. This is the equivalent density in the international standard atmosphere where the current density that we have occurs. It is calculated from the current temperature and pressure conditions, which we know, as we just saw, influence the density. You can calculate this um, density altitude using the CRP5 computer, or you can use a rough estimate, which is 120 feet per uh, degree of ISA deviation. And then you would add or take that away from the pressure altitude um, to find the density altitude. So an example of calculating density altitude would be something like this. At a pressure altitude of 13,000 feet, the temperature is minus 22 degrees Celsius. What is the density altitude? So you could either do this on the CRP5. Um, if you want more information on how to use a CRP5, I've got a video um, explaining a few of the things you can do with it. Or you can do it through a calculation. The first thing to do is find out the ISA temperature at 13,000 feet. So 15 degrees at sea level, minus two degrees per thousand feet, two times 13, 26. 15 minus 26 is going to be minus um, 11 degrees Celsius, and the actual temperature is minus 22. So our ISA deviation is minus 11, because it's 11 degrees colder than what it should be. Then we use the um, 120 feet per degree of ISO deviation, so it's minus 11 degrees of ISO deviation times by 120 equals um, 1,320 feet. And then it's going to be a minus value because it's colder. If it was hotter, it would be a positive value. And then we take that from the pressure altitude, minus 1,320, and that's going to equal... Um, 11,680 feet, and that's our density altitude, which is the equivalent altitude in the ISA atmosphere where the um, density occurs, basically. In summary then, that was a very short class, but as I said in the intro, the density isn't as big a factor in terms of whether it's pressure, temperature, or indeed humidity. But anyway, density is mass over volume, and the sea level density in the international standard atmosphere is 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed. And as we increase in altitude, the density decreases. One of the factors behind this is the temperature, but it doesn't play as big a role as the pressure. But basically, as the temperature is dropping, it means that the volume is dropping as well. Everything is becoming contracted together, which would mean that the density increases. So you can think of cold places, such as Siberia, as having quite dense air. The main driving factor behind the altitude and density relationship is the pressure. As we increase in altitude, the pressure drops. This causes the volume of air to expand. Everything expands out, which means there are fewer particles per unit volume, and that also causes the density to drop. As the humidity increases, or I suppose we could do it conversely, as the humidity decreases, it means there are fewer water molecules in the air. Water molecules are usually lighter um, than air molecules, which means that as there are fewer of these water molecules in the air, the mass of the air actually increases. And as the mass of the air increases, we're taking a bigger number, dividing it by the same volume, which means that our density also increases. So you can think about really humid air as being quite um, low in density, but really uh, dry air as being uh, very dense, essentially, because it's all to do with the weight of the water molecules. Sounds a bit counterintuitive because humidity, you'd think you'd have more water in the air, which would mean there's more stuff in it, but it's down to the actual weights uh, and masses of those particles. So density plays a big role in generating aerodynamic forces. This is the equation and it features density 
um, as one of the multiplying factors. So what we can do for ease of calculations is use the density altitude, which is the equivalent altitude in the international standard atmosphere where the current density we're experiencing happens. And you can calculate that by taking the pressure altitude and then taking away or adding on 120 multiplied by the ISO deviation and you get a good estimate of what the density altitude is um, for your current pressure altitude.